hello welcome back to my channel today i am going to go back to these um stamps that i got from uh hobby lobby they're from art impressions and they're the frog set um one of our subscribers dieta asked me to um do another one of these cards and i am and i'm still gonna keep it simple and i guess as every well it's gonna be a little more involved than the first card but um i'm still gonna keep it simple and every time i use them i'll, I'll complicate it just a little bit <laughs> not too much because then this video will be like eh, five hours long but um we're gonna use this guy today and we're just gonna stamp and color him first and then we'll decide what bits and pieces we're gonna put together um i have an idea but i actually have two ideas and we're gonna see what works best so i'm gonna get my stamping platform and um, i'm gonna stamp it out um i'll get that and i'll be right back okay so i got the platform out i put them on um i'm using today though the the Strat Stratsmore bristol <laughs> smooth card stock and that's because the, the paper i normally use which is the accent i don't know if they changed their formula or whatever but it's not as smooth as it was before and i was having trouble blending my colors out so i figured I, i'd um go back to this one for a bit to see if maybe it's the batch i got i'll order a new one soon um but anyway we're gonna stamp it out and i'm leaving myself enough room because i'm not sure how i'm gonna die cut it yet um so might as well leave enough room so i don't um mess that up now we're gonna stamp it out with um the spectrum noir alcohol proof black ink okay just because to me it just works better with the markers even though i tried um a memento ink that i had there for a while and it kind of did pretty good too I guess you just gotta try things out and see how things work for you and in your environment different temperatures different everything it all plays with the stuff like I I've been having issues with some of my paper warping because it is so humid and then no matter how much um you try to keep the humidity out it always comes in so some of my papers have suffered <laughs> And since I don't have an actual craft room, I can't just close it out. So, you know, any opening and closing of the doors, being that I'm right off the kitchen, it um, affects my products. Anywho, enough of that. So we have him cut out. And we're going to color him in with some of our um, Spectrum Noir markers and i figure we're gonna start with uh our little guy just in case i mess up anything else i can just um go back and blend them out so we're gonna start off with the lightest green and i'm gonna pause a couple of times in this video just because i don't want it to be extremely long and um you know I don't want you guys to get bored. <laughs> I want subscribers. I don't want to lose subscribers. <laughs> no, I'm having fun. I mean, I was thrilled when um, Dieta commented that she wanted to see more. Because, you know, as a content creator, you, you start getting a little worried that whatever you're bringing out is not appealing to anyone. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to color him in all light green. And then we're going to go ahead and um, give him some shadows and some dimension. And make this little guy look cute. Okay. We're going to be careful not to get too much on this. Even though this is going to be a darker color, you still don't want shadowing. Um in certain areas just because you went outside the lines so 
I'm just going to be a little more careful today. And then let's get his little feet. Okay. Now we're going to add some dark tones. Of course, you're going to have some where he's laying down. Just because the sun is not hitting that part too much. And you could go piece by piece so you, you could see where you want it and maybe just go back and add some later on. Okay, and some here. And I'm going to blend that out first before I go to other parts of his body. Just to make sure I like what's going on. And we're going to keep blending him. So, so far I like that. But we still have a long ways to go. That's never a good thing. And then we're going to go back with our light tone. And we're going to try to bring some of that color up here. Because I really don't want, since the sun should be hitting his belly, I don't want to make him too dark on top. So we're just going to like bring some of these colors up. And um, hopefully that works. And that's what we're getting so far. And I'm liking that. And of course, we're going to do some here, just a tad. Not much at all. I mean, sometimes it's just best to add a little bit and not overdo it. Okay. And just blend that out a little bit. Again, I, I know this part is kind of boring, but um, kind of important to know, you know, where you want to add some of your tones. So if this, the sun is coming this way, maybe, hmm. Maybe just add a little bit here, and I'm just doing a mid-tone now, I'm not... I'm trying not to go too dark. And I'm just going to bring that out. Okay. And I pretty much think that he's good to go. Um, maybe add a little bit there. Because, of course, his hand will cast a shadow on his belly. But I'm not going to do it too dark. So I'm just doing tone on tone there. So I think we're good with him. And um, we could turn our attention to the mushroom. I'm going to start that online and then um, I'll pause. Just because, like I said, I don't want to bore you guys too much. <laughs> Alright, we're going to start with our lightest tone. And we're going to try to be really careful around his body. And even around these circles, because we're going to do that a lighter color. And if you do it too dark, you're going to have to really shade it in. And it may not pop as much. So we're just going to take our time and be careful. And I'm going to do this part and I'll be um, right back. Okay, I just came back to show you guys that in his case, since he's laying on the mushroom, my darkest tone is going to go up there. It's going to go close to his body. Just because that's where the darkest tone would 
B, right? And then we're going to bring it down. Now, I got a little bit inside the line. Um, depending on what I'm going to, how I'm going to color it, I'll either try to blend it out with the blender pen or, um, if, depending on how I color it, maybe I'll use the um white gel pen just to clean it up a little bit but i'm gonna do all of this with the dark tone right now and go around some of these circles just to cast some shadows and then i'm gonna go with the mid tone and back with the light tone to blend it on it blend it all in okay so i cut my paper because i needed some a piece of paper on the bottom just to push that red through i <clears throat> excuse me i am using the blender pen to do that and i did it once i'll let it dry and then come back and do it again um we are gonna do his eyes and again we're gonna add some shadows to the back of it just because he's sleeping And I think we're good there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom of the mushroom and I'm gonna do it in brown tones. I'm gonna start with my lightest tone. And then we're gonna move from there and see where we add shadows and stuff. I'm not touching this yet because depending on how it looks, I may have to use uh, my, my gel pen to fix it. Oh, just give me a second, guys. I have to sneeze. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Finding the sniffles. Okay, we're going to use our dark tone. Okay, and we're going to go with our mid tone. And this is going to be an easy color. And just blend it all out. And I think we're good there. Now we're going to push that color through a little bit more. And I'll decide if I'm going to either do... Um... Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to do our... Um, a words <laughs> our blender pen, uh, not our blender pen a gel pen there so i'm just going to come and shade that just a little bit and leave the spot where um i would have to use the blender pen alone and this is just to give a little dimension to these spots and of course up here it would have shadow because that's where he's laying and then we'll just use our gel pen. That's not it. To fix these little spots. And just like that, you make them go away. <laughs> you don't have to start over when you make a mistake. You can see how you can fix it. These little colorings are time consuming sometimes, so okay, we're gonna leave it like that because I still have to do a couple of things to this uh little frog. So I'm gonna cut him out and I'm gonna use the torn edges dies from um Crafter's Companion. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna use it like that. And we're gonna end up putting a sentiment on top. So we're gonna cut him out like this, and then we can color him a background. I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut him out with the torn edges um, nesting dies from Crafter's Companion. And I use this die set because, first of all, it was they have um, a, a large selection of dies you can choose from. And second of all, I just like the way um, these edges look. So we're going to use that. Now, normally I would mask this or something, um, but I'm always assuming that if you're a new crafter, 
you may not have all these supplies so i mean how can we make it that you can still create these things without having all this stuff so i'm not going to use anything to mask it i'm just going to be very 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 careful excuse me so we're going to one second okay sorry about that we're going to start off with um we're going to start off with our sky Mm. And we just got to decide if we want to do this blue or an amber color. Hmm. I think we're just going to do blue. And we're just going to go very slowly and carefully so we don't um, mess up our little guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do yellow just to make him pop a little bit. Yeah, I think we're going to do the yellow. Just to make it look like he's just in the sun. Being in the sun. And this is um the fossilized amber. Let me see if I like that. Yep, that's good. Not too bright. Okay. So we're going to go darker of course at the edge and i'm going to do that first before bringing the color in just to see how much we want to add and then slowly i'm going to add bring in the color and since this is a light color even if you go in a little bit and you touch him it's not gonna really make a difference And just try to get as close as you can and then we could come back and darken the edge a little bit more just to make it pop and just add it slowly until you're happy with the result this is your artwork you do as much as you want or as little as you want okay and even though it looks like i'm getting really close to him i'm really not the bristles are still far away from him since the brush is curved this part is hitting the paper I want and this is staying away from him so the, these brushes are pretty cool because of that and then we'll darken up the edge a little bit more you can use the same color to add all the dimension that you want you don't have to have a million different colors so I think he's good for now we need to add stuff later we will um, and then the bottom we're going to do is green. And I was going to do two shades, but again, I think I'm going to just keep it simple. Mm. Let's flip this over so I don't contaminate it too much. And if you're getting really close to something like that, you can just grab a piece of paper. <laughs> Let's see what I have. And just go close to it. And there you go. Ah, oh, darn it. I contaminated it. All right. We'll blend that out. Okay. Since he's already green, you don't have to worry about the green going on him. And just sneak up little by little. And you can get all that tone in. And the same thing over here. If you have a stencil of grass, you can use that. Um, you 
can cut him out totally fussy cut him and just use uh, layers of grass and stuff uh, to, to create your background but I'm just trying to keep it simple and you're you're gonna get better results than me you're gonna take your time and get all this pretty but I'm just trying to get um, my timing okay and then we could come back with a little more dark and add that in again just giving a little bit of um, dimension and you've just used two colors to create a background now the sentiment is going here so i'm not too worried about this being um so much yellow you can add little butterflies or something or if you have a a, a stamp of a little butterfly or, or any kind of ladybug or whatever flying you can add that but i'm just going to keep it simple today no not too simple okay so we have him done and we're going to stamp out our sentiment that way then I can add some glossy accents because you guys know I love my glossy accent. Uh, just to add some shine and, you know, finish it off, make it look pretty. Okay, we're going to tape him down. Just because I don't want extra bulk next to him. I don't want to have a hard time um, stamping up my sentiment. And we're going to use Don't Worry Be Happy Copy. Maybe not. Maybe you're unforgettable. <laughs> yeah, we'll use that one. Kind of hard to get it right when you can't see it too much. Let me lift it a little bit. Just give me one second, guys. Okay. Wow, what's wrong with me? I'm having a hard time centering this thing. All right, I'm going to pause and center it. All right, I have to move him down. I don't know why I'm having trouble centering it. I guess because it... Oh, great. Let's see. Right there. This is real life, guys. <laughs> Stuff happens. <laughs> Let's double check that now. Err. Okay, let's try this again. And I'm not even going to think too much about it. Let's get it as best as we can, and we're going to continue on. I can be kind of OCD, and this is not time for OCD. Let's see. I'll be right back. You know what? At this point, I'm just going to commit. Get that off slowly. And it is what it is. And I think I just was overthinking it. Okay, so we have our little sentiment there, which is super cute. Even though it was a super pain. <laughs> but you guys, come on, you guys got to that. I know I'm not I'm not alone in this 
Okay, so now what we're gonna decide what to um add just to make it pop a little bit more. And first of all, <clears throat> excuse me. Now I'm gonna pass a little bit more of our white ink. It's raining outside. And we have to decide whether we're gonna um, put the glossy accents on the mushroom or on him. Hmm. The last time I did it on the frog and it came out super cute, so I'm gonna do it on the frog. Just cause I want him to pop more than anything. Or maybe I should do the mushroom. I'll do the mushroom on this time so that we can add the mention to the mushroom. And this is just being careful and you can literally just push it. Glossy Accents come in, it comes in a bigger bottle. I bought these little bottles on Amazon because of the tip. Now these tips are great in one way and horrible in another. With the glossy accents, if you don't have it like this, then you end up drying the glossy accents in the tips. And every single time you use it, you're going to have to try to get it out. On the other hand, if you do store it upside down, you won't have that problem. I'm gonna add it in the in the inside also. I just want it to dry a little bit so you can see the difference with the two. And this is gonna have to dry for a little bit just because I made it extra puffy. Just to give the mushroom the illusion of being round. We're gonna do much more to this guy. I'm probably gonna add some. Um a little bit of shine. <laughs> Alright, but for now we're gonna let him dry. Oh my hands are horrible. Okay. So we're gonna get rid of this stuff. We're gonna push it to the side. Get rid of the blue, get rid of the green. We're done with that. We're done with um these colors. And now we're gonna think about our background. Now we can do the background green. Or we can do it in brown tones. Now, one thing I was thinking of is taking um, this folder um, and just inking it up and then adding brown colors to it. Which you can just see how it will look. Or we can just go totally green. Now I think I'm leaning towards the greens, even though the browns would have been interesting. Okay. We're going to need these two. And we're going to have to decide which color is going to be our background, which color we're going to use to cut um, some more of the nesting guys out of. And... This is what we have to choose from. Hmm. Just trying to see where the layers will look best. I'm kind of thinking that maybe one of the nesting dies should be this color. And maybe just do the more simple one. Maybe with our little folder as our background okay we're gonna try it it's just paper we can try it and if we don't like it we can change it up but we might like it so just carefully move this guy while he dries and then we're gonna start cutting all this out i'm gonna cut this one um as five by seven or a little smaller than five by seven and we're going to die cut some of these guys out. I'll be right back with that. And again, I don't want to keep the video too long. And we're already at a half hour. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay. 
I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut out our pieces here and we're not sure yet if we're going to use it like this, but for now we're just going to leave it there. And I opted for um, the chicken wire folder instead. I'm not one to follow rules. <laughs> um, I just do what I like and, you know, it doesn't have to make 100% sense as long as um, everything comes out pretty, right? So we're going to do that. So we're going to use our folder, our embossing folder, I mean our embossing mat and our cutting plates. And this is running through the Gemini Junior. Noisy oh, little machine. Okay, so now we have texture. Love, love, love texture. So I know I want to use this layer, but I feel that it's too dark and I just want to add some kind of um, shine to it. Do I have anything else that would go? Mm. Let me check something. I'll be right back. Okay, so before we worry too much about that, we're going to add a little bit of dimension to our um, layer. And this is the Frost Forest Moss by um, Tim Holtz, is his Distress Oxide. Ooh, we can't word now. And we're just going to ink this up just a little bit. And it's all just adding some dimension to this card. I know everything seems kind of dark for such a <laughs> bright yellow little frog. But sometimes that's what you need to just focus on on your um, focal point. It just draws your eye to it. And I'm going to go a little higher here, not too much where he would go. And I think we're good to go there. You could even come back with like the vintage photo and just darken your edges more. Or even with this one, just come back and do that. It just makes it look a little older. Okay, so we have that. And then we could see where we want to put our little guy. And if we want to add our sparkle. I'm going to try to ink that also just to bring down that color just a little bit. Because why not? Just a tad. You can change your stuff up like... Make it your own. And if you're going to go out and buy every single color of good at cardstock, you, you not only need a lot of space, but you're going to need a lot of money. <laughs> so we'll make our own. Okay. So that toned it down a little bit. Let me see if I like that better. I don't want to move him too much. But yeah, that brought it down. Okay. 
and I'm kind of liking that. You could have gone with blue tones. You could have gone with any kind of um, background you have, but it, it's to me, it's it's the layering and stuff that that gives the card a lot more um, dimension. It looks more interesting to me, and I love textures. I, I love mixing textures and uh, again putting things together that really shouldn't go together. But if at the end it looks pretty, then eh, why not? <laughs> okay so we're gonna start gluing this down if you wanted to add some ribbon like we did with the other one you can but in this case i'm not i'm just gonna keep it as simple as well you know i have to stop saying simple because this ended up being a pretty long video and um i wasted a lot of time with my sentiment just because i wanted to get it straight <laughs> so we're gonna put that there we might add foam tape to bring him up, but we're going to put this layer here. Maybe. I'm kind of thinking we should go with a lighter color now. No, because I really want him to pop. I think that's the way he's going to stay. Okay. I'm going to glue it down. Um, and I'll be right back. I'm not, I'll put him on later but we're just gonna glue these guys down and then we'll get um our card base ready i'll be right back okay so i have our card base and i glued those on and i'm now i'm gonna glue one of our layers onto our card base Okay, I'm putting on plenty of glue so I can move it around. And I think that's good. Okay. So for our, our dimension, instead of using foam tape or anything, I just cut out two more pieces of um, the same die i used for that and we're gonna put that there and normally i would want to yeah, i'm gonna glue them on okay i'm just afraid of ruining him <laughs> okay so we're gonna put the glue here instead let's just add our glue and pray for the best i'm being careful because i'm not sure if, if um the glossy accents are dry and we're just gonna lay that down there take some of that glue out try to get it as perfect as possible and then for this i'm going to just put a piece of paper on it and press down i just don't want to get any ink on it and just get close as you can just be very careful and I think we're good to go so we're gonna let that dry for a second and then we're gonna add our glue and it'll go right there and we we have a little bit of height without um, using foam tape Okay, so we're going to let this dry for a minute and then we'll be back. Okay, so we're going to add the glue to the back and we're going to try to be really quick about it because again, my glossy accents might move. And then we're going to try to center this as good as possible. And I guess that's as good as place as any. All right. Again, we're going to use to push it down. Okay. 
and we have him there now you can do several things to this you can add um some white spots to him um you can add some glitter you can add some dew drops maybe we'll do a couple here Add a couple to the other side. And we're going to let him dry up a little bit and see what else we can do. Um, but I think he's pretty good. I think it's pretty much done. Um, it actually was a simple card to make. I just overcomplicated it again. <laughs> you only needed a couple of colors of ink if you have them. If not, you don't need it. Yeah, an embossing folder with paper, some glitter paper. Even if you don't like the color, ink it up, change it up a little bit. And just add any accents or anything that you like um, to make it pop a little more. You can add some sequins if you like, if you don't have glossy accents. Um, again, you can use just a glitter pen to add a little bit of interest and just test it out. I think this is a cool card for a guy, maybe. Um, I like it. I think it came out pretty cool. It's a little bit different. Uh, normally, you would use, you know, brighter colors for a card like this. But I think um, having the image pop really came across so i hope this helps i, I hope it, it just you know opens up uh your creativity to using different things and and just thinking a little bit outside the box and maybe mix and matching um what you have to create or something that's just a little bit different something uh, a little bit different than anyone else's, right? Because this is all yours. This is your art. Um, again, I hope this helps. I, I hope you guys have a great day. And if um, you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.